Hello there. Welcome to our first virtual preview event live from our Cincinnati Warehouse showroom. My name is Palmer. I'm the Marketing and Creative Director here at Everything But The House. We have an exciting collection to share with you today out of Tuxedo Park, New York. Interior designer Brad Bowles has decided to shed a huge selection of his personal collection in order to refresh for his own palette and in an effort to look forward personally. Collecting beautiful items has been a passion of Mr. Bowles and he is very excited about the, about the new search ahead. Pieces of this collection come from Mr. Bull's extensive travel and worldwide hunting. With pieces coming from locales like France, Morocco, England, Mr. Bull's encourages you to push yourself to get comfortable traversing cultures and centuries, tapping into mixed styles of global eclecticism. We have a great crew of experts from our talented EBH team here to share some of our favorite items and answer some of the questions sent in by our online community. Please remember tonight is live, so bear with us. I already messed up just a second ago. Come along for the ride and let's see what happens. We want to hear from you. Chat questions and let us know if there is a specific item from the Bulls collection that you want to know more about. We will do our best to share more detail on that item. All right, here we go, guys. Let's get started. Jen's going to pop over and talk to us about some, uh, some chairs we have here. Well, these Louis XV Bergere chairs are a fan favorite, and it's easy to see why. They're absolutely gorgeous. What I like about this, uh, the, this style of Bergere chair, number one is they're comfortable, and they're elegant. I mean, look at this curvilinear line along the top rail. It's got great carved detailing, which is mimicked again along the apron and at the cabriole leg. Uh, they're caned at the back and curved again comfortable chairs that are just absolutely gorgeous and the patina is perfect I mean this isn't this is only accomplished through you know years of of love and um, Someone has really taken care of these so does a chair like this like have to be displayed in a traditional home? Oh, absolutely not. I think that these would be incredible statement pieces in any home I can see them in a more contemporary setting or uh, just as comfortably as they would be in uh, someone's home that collects antiques. Yeah, I feel like the celery green like really pops and like would pull it off in a, in a modern I, place. I love the upholstery and I think that it's very neutral. Um, the seats are feather filled. Yeah. Again, you know, these are comfortable chairs that you're going to use. You're not just, they just, you know, they don't look beautiful. Yeah. They're, they're comfortable as well. Very cool. Great pair of chairs. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. Uh, we're going to move over to Kara. I think she's got a piece of art set up over there. It's one of the more popular pieces in the site. Hey, Palmer. Hey. hey. Um, so we have here a painting by the British artist Leonard Richmond, and he painted an array of subjects, um, but was partic particularly known for his cityscapes and landscapes. Um, I love this work because it's a more expressionist example of his work. You don't see this typically in his his um, his style. It, it looked like as I was coming up, it kind of looks like a landscape. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at first, it looks like an abstract landscape, but um, if you look closer, it's actually an underwater scene. Uh, you see the really colorful yeah. coral. And the That's foliage. crazy. Yeah, the crustaceans, and then there's like fish there. There's actually two fish in the middle, and the artist cool. beautifully like, captures this break of light through that radiates throughout. I love that he skillfully shows the sense of movement in the piece. Um, you can see with the very gestural brush strokes. Um, there's this real sense of mystery in this piece. Even though it's very bright, it's very mystical and has this kind of fantasy aspect to it. Um, very, very expressionistic. Um, and it's also great because it's presented in this beautiful gilt frame. Uh, what's great about this frame is you can see it has delicate um, arabesque kind of molding. Yeah. Um, but it's not your typical very bright gold tone. Yeah, it's not gilt. like over the top exactly, in your face. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, if it had been a bright gold tone frame, I feel like it would have competed with the piece, but it really allows it to shine. Um, but I think this piece would really uh, brighten up someone's room very nicely. So. Very cool, very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're going to move over. Meredith's got a couple of very cool uh, Portuguese mirrors that are mm -hmm. kind of flanking another part of our showroom, and she's going to share a little bit about those. These, Palmer, are one of my most favorite pieces from Brad's collection. What I love about them is that their scale is super impressive. The mirrors are richly carved in an arabesque foliate with tulip accents throughout surrounding the beveled glass. Um, I think that they're super modern because they are painted in a dove gray, which you're seeing is um, in the housing market right now, a, a really big trend. And what I think that makes them even more modern is that they are a matte finish and they're also very distressed. Um, something that I think is an even cooler detail is that there's almost like a two-tone um, paint color happening with 
the frame right around the mirror and the flowers throughout are slightly lighter and almost a little bit um, milky. I think that these mirrors would look amazing um, in any entryway or um, flanking a sideboard as we've shown here or even in a newly renovated updated bathroom um, over a double vanity. Awesome. Thanks, Meredith. Uh, hey, Jen, why don't you pop in here? I think there were, we're going to talk about this uh, Louis Vuitton trunk. Let me grab that for you. Sure. Thanks, Palmer. No worries. All right. Well, this piece is, is cool because these don't come around very often. Uh, it's a Louis Vuitton train case. These were made popular by ladies at the turn of the century that they were uh, when train travel was really popular and ladies were exploring again. So they would keep their toiletries in here and they'd be able to freshen up wherever they were. Very cool. Um, now, pardon my French, it's been a long time, but I think it's pronounced a boite de pute, which uh, translates to bottle box. And as you can see, the interior, if you'll help me just tip yeah, this forward tip a little bit. Yeah, you can see inside that there are um, uh, loops of leather and those would hold your bottles in place. And so that they, and yeah, like yeah toiletries cool. yep. and, and things that you would use to Very freshen cool. up. So of course it has the mirror. Well, and I'm also noticing the, uh, the, the serial number and it still has the, uh, the maker's stamp in there, which is very cool. Exactly, and that dates this piece to the 1960s. Very cool. So, and that's why it has this nice patina. It's got, um, you know, brass hardware at the corners that would protect the case. Again, uh, great patina. Uh, the icon iconic uh, Louis Vuitton monogram canvas. Uh, the handle's in good shape. It's marked Louis Vuitton. Everything about it is just right as rain, and it's just a really cool piece. Yeah. Oh, and we want to talk super about cool. yeah the the initials the, at the, the front, which are hand painted under a crown. And we have looked and looked and looked to see if we could find out who this belonged to. To no somebody avail, somebody special. To though. no avail. I'm 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 sad to say, but at the same time, it must be somebody <laughs> so special because they've earned a crown. So anyway, super cool piece. All right on, all right on. All right, well, I think Kara's set up again. We got, uh, she's, she's got a piece that's one of her favorites in the sale. We're going to go over and check that out here and see what she's got. Hello again. Hey. hey. Yeah, here, so this is probably my favorite piece in the entire collection. Um, this is a painting that's done in a folk style by the Brazilian artist Roberto Cesar Lopez. So, like, what, uh, tell me what is folk about this piece. Okay, yeah, sure. So, it, it was done around 1968, and what, some typical characteristics you're going to see are very simple shapes, um, very flat, bright colors that have little gradation. Um, you're going to see very stark outlines. Notice that the figure is very frontal and stiff. Yeah. Um, that's something you're going to see a lot. I love it because, you know, it's an interior scene and there's very little sense of spatial re recession. Everything's here. super kind of flat. Yeah, it looks like the wall and the floor are almost like on the same plane. And the overall piece, like, it almost just looks, it looks like a collage, not a painting, because yeah. all the patterns are very flat. Um, you can see you have this Moorish pattern in the background. It has very... Um, it seems like there's a lot of different texture and pattern exactly. in here. Exactly, and then you have very delicate pattern in, this, in the swan bench. My, my favorite part of the painting is her legs. They look like these little twig legs, but then they have this really endearing, delicate argyle plaid pattern. Um, you know, this is a really small piece, as you can see, so um, it would add a lot of pop of color in someone's room, but I think yeah. deserves a really intimate place in a home. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's one of my favorite pieces, so you're probably going to be bidding against me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heard it, so you're going to have to bid against Kara on this one, um, sorry to say. Actually, um, we did have a question about this uh, icon over yeah. here. This thing's cool. Uh, yeah, it's really, really, um, it's really fantastic. Sorry, it's probably a little far away for you guys. We'll try to get some zoom ins on here, but this thing's uh, yeah. got a lot of detail. It's pretty cool. Um, so this is a Greek or Orthodox icon, and it shows um, their, uh, per per Our Lady of Perpetual Help, excuse me. <laughs> and someone asked what that means exactly. That's a, a canonical image in Catholic imagery um, that's been around for centuries, actually since the late 15th century. And what you're going to see in that image is a picture of the Virgin Mary, and she's dressed in red, which is the color of the queen. Then she has the child, and he's surrounded by instruments of uh, the passion. On the left, you're going to have the Archangel uh, Michael, and on the right, uh, Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel. Um, this piece is especially valuable because it's in an 18-karat gold frame. Um, and it has this stand on the back, so oh, yeah. you can put it on a shelf or an altar or even a desk. It's present very, itself. It's very portable, yep. 
Um, and I mean, you can just imagine the skill that goes into it's a inc- small I mean, the piece. detail on these mm-hmm. these birds and on the de- uh, it's insane. It's very, it's very meticulous. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very, uh, very skilled work here. Very, so. very cool. Yes. All right, I think we got another piece set up that uh, people were interested in. So we're going to go talk about some guardian lions. Here we go, Jen. What do you got? I love these guardian lions. They're actually snow lions, and snow lions were very important in the Tibetan culture. Uh, Not only did they represent strength and courage, but also joy and bliss. And I love the way they're always shown with their mouths agape and their tongues kind of hanging out. They're, they're slightly snarled, so you can't tell if they're, if they're fierce or fun. <laughs> um, one of the things that, you know, always an upturned up tail. And one of the interesting things is they're always shown with like these wings at mm-hmm. their shoulders and at their ankles. Okay. But snow lions never flew. Actually, their feet never touched the ground. They were always portrayed as jumping from mountaintop to mountaintop because they were, they were just so joyful. So, <laughs> frolicking. Yeah, frolicking, exactly. <laughs> uh, what I like about these is the scale of them. The scale, the patina, everything yeah. is... Yeah, these things are like... Yeah, they're very I mean, heavy. They're hefty. Yes, yes. They're very they're, cool. They're not going anywhere, <laughs> exactly. Um, so anyway, they're, they're, they're just terrific. Yeah, they'll night, stand night. out, stand guard, and uh, keep an eye. Yes, they'll keep you safe. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. I think we're going to just, let's go drop these down. Or do we have something offline or do we want to talk about the topiaries? We ready? Let's do the topiaries. Yep. Let's move these down. All right. All right. There we go. I'll grab one of these. I'll grab this one. All right, Meredith, Meredith. what do we got here? You want to talk about these guys? Yes. These are beautiful Italian terracotta topiaries. And what I love about them is that they're vintage. And you can see that they were really loved by Brad or who owned them um, before him. Even prior, yeah. There's a little bit of wear around the base and in certain spots. um, I mean, I think the 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 little distressing and and crackling is like good character. It definitely gives them a lot more character. Um, I also love that they're a pair, of course, and the fact that their scale is so large. Do you, these, I mean, do we find pairs of these, or is it kind of hard to keep a pair together, I guess, over the years? We've actually never seen one like this. They're almost Capitamonte style, but we weren't able to find anything exactly cool. like them. Um, what I love about them is that they're so tall and that they're overflowing with all different kinds of produce, but they have a pineapple finial on each, which um, is a symbol of good luck. In traditional Chinese culture, um, feng shui, uh, the pineapple is a symbol of wealth, fortune, and prosperity. So I think that they would just look extra opulent on a dining table or on a sideboard like we've shown here yeah, or even beautiful. on a mantle. Flanking a piece on the mantle exactly. would be, that'd be really exactly. cool. Exactly. I love cool. them. Nice statement pieces in a fresh room. 100%. Very cool. All right. I'll let you guys get these things put back up there, displayed perfectly. Thank you. Uh, and I think we have some uh, ancestral portraits uh, that uh, Kara's going to take us through. Let's get over there and see what she's got. Hey, so these are a stunning pair of Chinese ancestral portraits. Um, they, sh- they show the Chenlong Emperor and the Empress on the left. Um, so ancestral portraits um, were basically images of the imperial family and court members and all, sometimes affluent Chinese um, sure. people at the time. Um, they were kind of like the equivalent of uh, portraits on ancient Roman coins that showed the profile of the emperor, and it was a way to get the image out there and into homes and official buildings. Um, and today, these, this uh, type of painting is considered a very important type of Chinese art. It's very collectible. So was the emperor, was he important? Absolutely. And I'm not going to say the name because I'll murder it. So, uh... <laughs> um, yes, he was actually considered a deity figure. Um, so numerous likenesses um, of him have been produced, many found in households and official buildings. Um, are these, so are these, like it looks like they're kind of on glass. So it's, it's Absolutely. So these are actually reverse glass paintings, okay. which makes them a little bit unique because typically ancestral portraits were on scrolls. Okay. Um, and what you have here with the emperor, you can see he's wearing a yellow robe or a gold robe. That's the imperial color for him. And that robe is decorated with the Chinese five claw dragon, which is um, the animal he was associated with. Cool. And he's also on a dragon throne, a very majestic dragon throne. Now on the flip side, while what, he was- What's she asso- got going on? Yeah, while he, <laughs> while he was associated with the dragon, you can see that she is on a throne um, she was associated with the phoenix. So you're going to see uh, yeah. the phoenix motif throughout yeah, her, cool. her throne. Um, 
But these are highly collectible. They are important because they didn't really reach the marketplace until the fall of the Qing Dynasty, which was in 1911. Um, but what these were important for was because they showcased the value in, of the culture at the time. They spent a lot of time showcasing uh, Chinese furniture, uh, the decor, the elaborate textiles. You can see the focus here is on showcasing you know, their robes and um, the thrones that they're sitting on. Um, but yes, very, very special pieces in this sale. Incredible, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's stay here. I think these, these chairs are actually super, super popular. So Jen, why don't you come on, let's talk about these chairs and, and see what we're going on. Maybe somebody out there can tell us what, uh, what these are currently at on the bidding. Uh, we'll throw that in here at some point. What do we got? Well, these chairs certainly make a statement, don't they? Um, not only their color, but the form. And this, uh, this form of chair, or it's called a porter chair, has been uh, popular more recently, but the first time we see these chairs is actually in 16th century France. And that is when wealthy families would actually hire a porter to sit in their hallways to kind of keep sentry, be, a, be the gatekeeper for the family to keep them safe, to announce visitors, to accept packages, that sort of thing. So the shape of the chair was important because these uh, gentlemen would be seated in pretty drafty hallways probably, so <laughs> it kept them kind of comfortable, but also the acoustic shape was thought to keep them more focused and more, uh, more uh, and, paying attention. And maybe not pick up on some family secrets. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, they're, they're, they're very, uh, an unusual shape that's become popular again. Yeah, and that, I mean, the color's great, and what's up, what's up with the uh, motif on the back here? Well, they're upholstered in a Ralph Lauren blue and white toile fabric, which, which is appropriate since they're French chairs. And then, of course, this kind of electric blue on the, on the interior of the chair. Um, and it's in this really nice, purposefully distressed finish to yeah, make them cool. look old, um, although they're, they're reproductions of an, older, of an older form. Again, we have a feather-filled cushion, so these chairs are going to be comfortable. Yeah, they're plush. Yeah, very, very nice. Very nice, and the electric blue will pop. It's exactly. cool. Exactly, and, and to have a pair, again. They're great. Really yeah, nice. super right. cool. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you, Jen. That was thank awesome. You. Did we get a number? Do we know what, that, what these are currently going for? Uh, 700. 700. All right. Get in there and bid before, they're, before they keep going up. Uh, all right. So, wow. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Some really cool stuff. Do we have any other questions that are coming in online that we want to talk about? Or, uh, we, uh, yes, we do. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Kara's set up with a, a little bit more. Yeah. So, um, we have we had a question actually what are sugar vases and they're exactly what you think they're used to sprinkle sugar on pastries and and fruits of the time it's it's a um it's something that was used during the time of george the third cool. so yeah, yeah. very yeah. cool that's pretty Do we know and what there's some great detail on there too yes absolutely absolutely so awesome do we have any were there any other questions about the sugar any vases? other things flying on all right cool that is awesome well, what, a, uh, what an amazing, uh, amazing collection. I love the worldly influence uh, Mr. Bowles and Mr. Bowles' willingness to push towards maximalism. Be sure to follow your favorites at ebth.com and, uh, and get, you know, as you look towards the sale this closing on Sunday night. We will be back with another virtual preview September 9th, showcasing award-winning textile artist Mia Bouet, and we will be sharing her collection, which includes her Nana's incredible vintage hat collection, designer fashion and gowns created by Mia herself. This sale will be extra special as it is being filmed as part of an upcoming TV series we are currently developing. Bidders will have a chance to be featured uh, on that episode uh, as the sale closes. So until then, keep hunting for everything uncommon. Happy bidding. We'll see you next time. Thank you.